Inspector, I responded to your invitation because I want us to understand each other. I'm a businessman. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back to the series where we explore introverted leadership on the example of the Peaky Blinders series. My name is Saint Simon and I'm glad to have you here. I want to say thank you for all the positive comments and feedback from the last video that I received. If you want to write me something, write it here in the comments on YouTube or at SaintSimon111. So let's dive together into the second episode of the first season. This episode includes the art of power, the art of leverage, the art of seduction and the art of the deal. In the last episode we were introduced to the Shelby family and Thomas Shelby as the head of the family. He's trying to leverage himself and his family business moving from the streets to the golden circles of high society. Life has given Thomas an ace, a golden ticket, an opportunity for a new life and Thomas is using this opportunity, taking risks and using his intelligence to leverage his situation. Let's see how Thomas deals with the new enemies he's made and how he will use his ace as leverage. Opening shot. Outside the city, we are introduced to the Lee family. Thomas has business with Lee family member. Thomas is talking to him as Thomas and not a Shelby persona. He is joking and smiling. Here we can see that Johnny Dogs is family. Arthur is furious because he doesn't understand Thomas' strategy, which involves thinking multiple steps ahead. His dealings with Johnny Dogs are merely a reason for being around the other Lee family members. The real business lies elsewhere. Thomas has a plan. Thomas provokes Lee members, provoking reason to fight. Situation escalates, Thomas and the boys beat up the Lee members. In the same time, the agent makes his next move. He goes on the offensive again, raiding the district of the boys and the people in it while they are away. The agent is stinging the Shelby rap nest, putting Thomas under pressure. So you specials only dare come here when you know the boys are away at the fair. But Polly is intelligent. She sees that the agent waits until boys are out of town to strike because he lacks the courage to face them directly. I'm lighting candles for the boys from the garrison who lost their lives in France. The agent wasn't in France like everyone else and he feels like a coward because of it. Others around him also remind him of that. Here you didn't make it to France, Inspector Campbell. Polly points out his weaknesses. She sees through him, recognizing his underlying weakness. Agent is threatening Polly. He forces control through physical strength, establishing him as superior and demanding full cooperation. He shows that he is the big man who has the power. Here we see an example of the art of power through the art of framing. Sorry, misunderstood your intention when you pushed me against the wall. Polly redirects the situation, reclaiming power, taking control, showing him that she's fearless, making strong eye contact. This is the art of framing. He believes he controls the situation because he's a man and she's a woman, and he perceives himself as superior due to his gender and his role as chief inspector. But she is using the art of frame, reframing the situation, taking control, showing him that she's in power, because she is fearless. Similar to Thomas, Polly also has a Shelby persona. This is Polly Shelby persona that she plays in public, cold and fearless. The agent now knows that Arthur doesn't know about the guns and Polly doesn't speak. Now the agent knows who he has to talk to to get the weapons. The boys arrive and see the damage. Family meeting. The inspector is driving a wedge between the Peaky Blinders and the people of the district, instilling fear in their minds that the Peaky Blinders can provide protection, undermining their power. This is again a mix of chess and poker like we saw in the first episode. It's an intelligent move. First he took away their police protection, now he's taking away their power on the streets. Thomas is again in a hard situation. Polly warned Thomas of the risk and danger and now he faces the pressure. The agent wants to meet with Thomas, but Thomas is thinking how to turn the situation to his advantage, using the weapons as leverage. You don't parley when you're on the back foot. We'll strike a blow back first. Here we see again the art of framing, but in this time for the art of leverage. We learned in the first episode that the art of leverage is all about turning disadvantages into advantages and create opportunities. Here we see Thomas using the art of framing to reframe and therefore leverage his situation, turning his disadvantage into an advantage. Thomas organizes a fire to burn pictures of the king and invites the press to write about it. Thomas changes his situation by changing public view on the circumstances, gaining so the trust of the people. In the first episode, the agent created a story. 
he, the mobile policeman, with his police army, cleansing the streets of the, the Peaky, Peaky Blinders. Blinders. It's a classic tale of the good ones against the bad ones. However, Thomas now shifts the narrative, portraying the agent as the villain and himself as humble war veteran, framing the agent as villain who terrorizes the city with his appearance. By burning pictures of the king and reporting to the newspaper, Thomas is gaining attention and provoking reaction of Mr. Churchill, putting the agent under pressure. This is again Sun Tzu, the art of war. Thomas has studied his enemy. He knows both himself and his enemy, understanding his own strengths and weaknesses as well as those of his enemy. He is using the strengths as war veteran to his advantage and the control of Winston Churchill as weak spot against the agent. Thomas puts the agent in a difficult position by drawing public attention to the case, creating stress and thereby driving a wedge between the agent and Mr. Churchill. It names Mr. Thomas Shelby. The report mentions he's a war hero. Thomas' strategy worked. He changed the public view and gained the power of the people, while the agent is again warned to use further immoral methods and to keep the case out of the public. Now the agent is in disadvantage and under pressure. Thomas gained power, while the agent lost power. Thomas just created a new enemy. He is now at war with the Lee family. The pressure on Thomas increases. Thomas is now also under heat. Uncle again warning Thomas, but Thomas is not listening because he has a plan. He keeps his Shelby persona. Introverted leadership can often be perceived as cold and detached. A poor example of introverted leadership might evolve into arrogance and an unwillingness to accept feedback, becoming excessively cold and detached. But introverted leadership doesn't mean being cold and detached. Being introverted is being inward focused, so you don't show it outwardly. Thomas doesn't talk about his plans, he doesn't share them, nor does he speak about what he knows. He doesn't show emotions and he is not open to others' advice. He keeps everything inside, remaining inward focused. As an introvert, Thomas observes more than he talks, which is why he notices things others don't. But inside, Thomas is a kind character. He appears cold and detached due to the dark world he lives in. He plays the Shelby persona as survival mechanism. <laughs> <laughs> but in the heat of the moment, Thomas shows his true side. Here we see how Thomas treats animals. This shows who he really is, inside. Thomas, the kind character. This is who he truly is. This is who he is when no one is watching. And France used to say, it's just a music old band turning up. It's just trombones and tubers, that's all. It's just noise. In this case, he is calming down horse, similar to the first episode with the PTSD. He is now calming horse, symbol for his PTSD he struggles with. We see that Thomas has a kind heart, because he's a kind character. He is a kind character who plays the Shelby persona to survive and strive in a dark world. Having a good heart is essential for effective introverted leadership. Without it, introverted leadership could result in arrogance and overestimation. Only with a good heart you can remain humble. Gray's job as spy is to observe Thomas when he thinks no one is watching. That's why she is the only one who is seeing Thomas, who he really is. Grace again showing that she is not afraid of him. She creates an opportunity to talk to him and come closer to gain more intel. The art of seduction. Here we see Thomas Shelby in dealing with women. You have something to say to me. He again is non-reactive. Not making small talk, he speaks out loud the feeling in the room. You sound like one of those rich girls who comes over from Dublin for the races. Thomas teasing her to provoke emotion and by so guard her down, then make invitation to take her with him on racetrack. I want to take you to the races. By teasing her first, he breaks the ice and then on direct level, he is being nice. Thomas in his Shelby persona sees Grace as another ace he can use as leverage on the chessboard later on. But Thomas the kind character also likes Grace. He liked her from the first moment they met. We saw that in the first episode and we saw how he used the same technique in the first episode. Are you a whore? Because if you're not, you're in the wrong place. It's the same technique of teasing with kinda insult to guard her down, to break the ice. This way, talk on more direct level and then on this more direct level, being nice.
The business is still booming. Their horse keeps winning and their betting house makes a ton of money. Thomas' strategy of the first episode worked. As Thomas enters the office, he shakes the hand of the other members and employees and looks them into the eyes. Even though this is not a big moment, you can see here again introverted leadership. Introverted doesn't mean that you are shy. It means that you are inward focused. You can still be confident. Confidence is shaking people's hand with a strong grip. Confidence is looking into people's eyes while delivering a strong handshake. Confidence is approaching and speaking directly to people. Introverted leadership is exactly that. Thomas Horst lost. His strategy worked and they made their biggest bet. More money than ever before. Polly is furious because Thomas is now fixing races and so making even more powerful enemies. But Thomas is calm because it's all part of his plan. You see, Thomas is fixing races to get the attention of Billy Kimba, to leverage his market to get to a higher league. Now that Thomas came back from war, he is not the same anymore. He now learned about tactics and strategy. In the last five years of war, he learned strategic thinking. When I learned some things such as, you strike when your enemy is weak. Thomas is fearless because he faced death already. He is not afraid of more powerful enemies because he is seeing their weak spots and how he can use them against them to leverage his own situation to get his family business into a new class of society. He sees opportunity to bigger business and he is not afraid of taking that opportunity. Thomas meets the agent. Now we see the art of the deal. Now that Thomas is on higher position he is ready to talk to the agent about business. This is the current chess bot. Thomas is at war with the Lee family, Thomas is pursued by the agent and Thomas interfered into Billy Kimba's business. The agent waits for Thomas to arrive. We can see here again through his body language an aura of nervousness and insecurity. Silence. Who is the first to break silence? I chose this place because it is outside both of our jurisdictions. Obviously who first breaks the silence? Thomas is again non-reactive and studies his enemy to get better into his head. He studies his body language and the way he talks. This is again the same principle of introverted leadership we saw in the first episode. Let others talk and observe. Do you want tea? The agent starts to break up the conversation, beginning with small talk, but Thomas remains non-reactive, going straight to business. Inspector, I responded to your invitation because I want us to understand each other. I'm a businessman. I want to make my business successful. His first words made it clear. I came here to talk business. Do not waste my time. Well, if the city is peaceful, business can thrive. Thomas demonstrates to his business partner that he is unlike Arthur or Polly. He is someone who thinks practically. He doesn't support the Irish rebellion, nor does he support communist ideals. He is only interested in business, approaching it in a practical and rational manner. What deal? Thomas leans in to demonstrate his engagement. This is the art of the deal, in this case the art of drama. He makes his offer more intriguing by building tension. For rhetorical pause, he creates anticipation. And this is also the art of power, taking up space to demonstrate power and confidence. Now Thomas is giving all his demands for a deal while maintaining strong eye contact. Thomas keeps his eye contact to show his seriousness. He is serious about his demands and he stands for it. Thomas wants his police protection back and in addition police protection outside his district to expand to the racetracks. Forgive me, I don't seem to have a pen. Thomas again shows that he is serious and that his demands are not negotiable. These are his demands and the agent only gets what he wants if these demands are fulfilled. This is why Thomas changed the situation first before talking to the agent. The agent is now in lower position under heat and pressure of Mr. Churchill. I have what you're looking for. I have the guns. The agent wants something from Thomas and in exchange for his help to deal with Billy Kimba, Thomas agrees to provide it. What guns? The agent tactic is to play the idiot, but that's not a real tactic, he's just an idiot and weak inside. He won in the past with brutal force mentality, he's not as intelligent as Thomas and can't compete with his tactics. We're not to play games. Wait, wait. 
Thomas made through his body language clear that he is serious and that he wants to make business. The agent wants something from him. And Thomas is ready to talk, but he demands respect. He stands up to demonstrate his seriousness and to convey that respect is essential for any dealings with him. In this context, respect means not wasting his time. He didn't come to drink tea or make friends. He is here strictly to discuss business. 25 loose machine guns, 50 carbines, 10,000 rounds of ammunition, all in a crate bound for Libya, stolen from the BSA factory proofing bay. Thomas describes the guns in detail, using vivid speech to emphasize that he possesses what the agent wants. He makes it clear that the agent will only obtain them if he respects Thomas and takes his demands seriously. Thomas also underlines that the agent is in heat and under pressure, underlying that, that the agent is in want while Thomas is in half. Thomas makes his final conclusion, warning the agent what happens if he not cooperates. In this case, guns go to the IRA and all the work the agent made in Belfast is gone. This, my friends, is called checkmate. The agent now has no space to move. Thomas outsmarted him in every attempt to make further steps. But for Thomas, this is practical. He isn't interested in being above the agent or proving himself better. He wants business and business is best when all parties win. That's the art of the deal. I'm a fair man. It's a fair offer. Do we have a deal? Thomas illustrates that this is a beneficial deal for both parties. The agent earns a medal for retrieving the guns while Thomas expands his business. A win-win situation. The agent wants the guns and Thomas wants business. But I'd prefer if we don't shake hands on it. The agent is a bad loser, not seeing that he has found what he looked for. He feels suppressed, not in power anymore. For him, it's the opposite. He is not practical, he is personal about it. He wants to stand above others. The agent played the power game on Arthur, the agent tried to play the power game on Polly, and here we see that he has no power over Thomas. Thomas comes closer, proximity is closer, he is physically near. Again, taking up space, coming closer to show his calmness under pressure, demonstrating so power and confidence. Now why would I shake the hand of a man? who didn't even fight for his country. Thomas points out the weaknesses of the agent and so gets into his head. Thomas studies his enemy. He knows the weaknesses of his enemy and he knows how to break them mentally. Agent meets with Grace. Here we see how the agent deals with women. Also art of seduction. The agent is not so confident around women like Thomas. The agent is not so confident around women because how we learned in the first episode, the agent only plays the powerful persona, but he's weak inside. Thomas Shelby is now the beginning, the middle and the end of your mission. The agent is a bad loser and takes the loss personally. Now he is personally attached to this case. He don't want just the guns, but he wants to bring down Thomas Shelby personally. He sees Thomas as his arch nemesis. Grace, my heart is with you. The agent and Thomas are different signs of a coin, similar to Gladiator with Commodus and Maximus. The agent in this example is Commodus and Thomas is Maximus. Watch the Gladiator movie analysis to understand this connection. Thomas lost an asset due to the war with the lease. Uncle has warned Thomas and now he faces the pressure and the consequences of going to war with the Lee family. Pressure on Thomas to act fast, no solution, no cure for the horse. I'm sorry. Thomas knows that he has to kill the horse to end its misery. And we see how it hurts him to do so, because he's a kind character. This shows the character of Thomas Shelby. He's playing most of the time the Shelby persona, not breaking his role under any circumstances. But in the heat of the moment, in moments like this, we see Thomas, the kind character, his real self. Faith brings Thomas and Grace together. She's there when he is Thomas and not Shelby. How's your beautiful horse? Thomas tries to suppress his feelings and his pain, playing the Shelby persona. I just put a bullet in his head. He looked at me the wrong way. It's not a good idea to look at Tommy Shelby the wrong way. He plays the Shelby persona here as an ego survival mechanism, because he sees how Grace is getting closer to him. He doesn't want anyone too close, so he uses the Shelby persona as a self-defense mechanism to make her afraid and run away. 
What a waste. Yeah, a waste is what it is. However, she stays and she sees through his facade and continues to come closer into his heart. You know, in France. Thomas can't resist and also opens up, revealing his true self. He is too exhausted to maintain the shabby persona at the moment. In France, I got used to seeing men die. Never got used to seeing horses die. They die badly. He tells her about the war, sharing the pain with her. He shares a cigarette with her, symbolically inviting her for company. Grace is teasing Thomas, makes jokes around him, shows him that she is unafraid of him. I want three. If I am meeting a king, I won't be wearing a cheap dress. Now Grace makes the art of the deal, but in the art of seduction, teasing him to make a deal. And I ask you to let me sing. It's part of the deal now too. Since when? Since you nearly smiled. She comes closer to him, make him nearly smile, symbolic that he opens completely as Thomas. I asked around about that pub he said you used to work in. I have friends over there. No one has heard of you. But Thomas again puts on his shabby persona, attacking her to guard down to see through her. He knows that she is hiding a secret. But he has the wrong lead about what it is, not knowing that she is a spy working for the agent. Thomas, now that he thinks he knows her secret, guards himself down and let her sing. Opens even more. But I warn you, I'll break your heart. Already broken. She sings directly into Thomas' heart, sharing pain and loss with him. Loss of the horse and all the men he lost in France. Grace brought sunlight into Thomas' world. Now all in the pub sing and cheer. She helped him to heal that wound from France and now he can sing again. We see that Thomas is in love, he has a crush on Grace. Grace is more than just pretty, she's also intelligent, fearless and possess a healing angel voice that healed the wounds of war. Powerful appearance, hour of fear and suspense, everyone is afraid and runs as far as they can. Thomas faces his new enemy. It's Billy Kimber. Now we see the art of power and the art of the deal. Show on. He says you wanted men called Shelby. You got three of them. Thomas fixed races and now he has the attention of Billy Kimba. Billy Kimba, the one and only who's allowed to fix races. Billy tries to guess who the boss is. While Arthur and John interact with Billy, playing a power game, Thomas remains relaxed and observant. Again we see the principle of listen and observe. This is one of the key principles of introverted leadership. Be silent and observe your surroundings. Thomas is not playing a game because he has another plan. I want to know what you want. He won by length twice and then finished last. Accountant who is also called impractical is talking to Thomas. Which one am I talking to? Which one of you is the boss? I'm Mr. Kimber's advisor and accountant. And I'm the fucking boss, okay? Right, end of parlay. Thomas uses again insults like we saw multiple times to guard down the other. In this example, he insults power of Billy Kimba, and Billy Kimba loses control of his emotions. While Billy is shouting around to show his power, Thomas is just sitting and observing. No reaction, no emotion. Mr. Kimba! Thomas knew that Billy Kimba would show up eventually. That's why he started the war with the Lee family on purpose, aiming to pitch Billy Kimba on working with him. That is my name, and it's from the Lee family. You were also at war with the Lees, Mr. Kimber, am I right? The Lees are attacking your bookies and taking your money. Your men can't control them. You need help. Thomas identified a weakness in Billy Kimber's enterprise and uses it for his own benefit. Kimber's security is bad and unloyal, causing him to lose money at every race to the Lee family. Thomas views this as an opportunity to offer better protection for Billy Kimba in exchange for a legal betting license and permission to fix races. Billy Kimba is not reacting because he don't realize what just happened. Perhaps we should listen to what Mr. Shelby has to say. But the accountant of Billy Kimba answers and shows interest in Thomas' offer. Because the accountant is rational and not fueled by emotion, interested to make a good deal. They are saying the racetracks are easy meets because the police are busy with strikes. Now, we have connections. We know how they operate. Similar to the agent, Thomas makes an offer that is fair and good for both parties. Everyone wins. That's the art of the deal. Both parties win. 
Billy is like an animal, driven by emotions. He and his accountant are complete opposites. Billy is loud and emotional, while his accountant is entirely cold and rational. I admire you, Mr. Kimber. You started with nothing and built a legitimate business. It would be an honor to work with you, Mr. Kimber. First, Thomas conveyed rational to the accountant that he has an interesting offer. Now, Thomas appeals to Billy Kimber on an emotional level. He doesn't focus on facts and benefits, but rather approaches the matter on a personal level, making compliments to let his guard down. Thomas not only giving him a compliment, but shows admiration and flattery in such a strong way that Billy Kimba can't resist to be charmed by it. Nobody works with me. People work for me. Billy Kimba shows his power and underlines that he is above all the others. No one is on his eye level. Pick it up, Pikey. Thomas plays submissive and obedient to guard him down, to show him that he is no danger. Billy Kimber is ego-driven and narcissistic, arrogant, impulsive and in general an idiot. Thomas sees that and uses his weaknesses against him. So you picked a fight with the Lees on purpose. Tommy, we can't mess with Billy fucking Kimber. Get yourself a decent haircut, man. We're going to the races. Thomas' plan worked out and he's again one step closer to his new golden life. End. Thomas did it. He leveraged his position to a new level, now having the chance to leverage his business further with Billy Kimba Alliance. What an episode! We witness again the art of leverage and much about the art of power, but this time we also learned about the art of seduction and the art of the deal. Especially interesting is the art of the deal shown with the agent and with Billy Kimba. We will explore these two themes more in the upcoming episodes. All of this is part of a series on introverted leadership, shown on the Peaky Blinder series. Tune in with me next week when we dive into the third episode of the first season. My name is Saint Simon, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks for watching, write a comment and subscribe for next week. Yeah.